Soldier's final journey by mail, but a group of bikers creates an unforgettable memorial. The roar of motorcycles echoed through the quiet streets as a convoy of bikers, clad in leather and solemn expressions, made their way toward the small town of Rockford. The air was thick with anticipation, but behind every visor was a single thought. Had this soldier's final journey, one that should have been marked with honor, ended up being carried out by mail. The story they were about to uncover would not only change their lives, but leave an entire town in tears. Rockford was a town where time seemed to stand still. Tucked away in the rolling hills of the Midwest, it was the kind of place where everyone knew everyone, and life moved at a slower pace. But that peace was shattered on an ordinary Tuesday morning when a package arrived at the local post office, addressed simply to the family of Skeet, Henry Ward, Gabriella Wood, the town's postmistress for nearly 30 years had seen countless letters and packages come through her small office. But something about this one stopped her in her tracks. It wasn't just the weight of the box or the solemnity of the label. It was the fact that she knew the Greens. Everyone in Rockford did. Henry Ward had been the town's pride, a young man who had joined the military straight out of high school, following in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. Gabriella hesitated as she reached for the package, her heart heavy. She knew what this was, even before she saw the return address from the Department of Defense. She had heard the rumors, the whispered conversations at the diner, the subdued tones when people spoke of the Greens. But nothing could have prepared her for this moment. She carried the package gently to the back room, setting it down as if it might shatter with the wrong touch. Gabriella stared at it for a long time, her mind racing. How could this be? Why was Henry coming home like this, his final journey reduced to a box delivered by mail? It didn't make sense, and it didn't sit right with her. As she stood there, lost in thought, the bell above the door jingled, snapping her back to reality. A group of men and women entered the post office, their presence commanding attention. They were dressed in leather vests adorned with patches, their expressions solemn. Gabriella recognized them immediately, the Patriot Garb riders, a group of bikers dedicated to honoring fallen soldiers. Good morning, ma'am, one of the men said, stepping forward. He was tall with a grain beard and kind eyes. We're here about Skeet, Henry Ward. Gabriella nodded, her voice catchy in her throat. The package arrived this morning. It's in the back. The man who introduced himself as Padraig nodded in understanding. We're here to make sure Skeet. Ward gets the farewell he deserves. We heard what happened, and we couldn't stand by and let it go like this. Gabriella felt a wave of relief wash over her. Thank you. I didn't know what to do. It just doesn't seem right. Padraig's eyes softened. It's not right, but we're going to make it right. Can you tell us more about the Greens? We want to do this properly. Gabriella hesitated, her mind swirling with thoughts. The Greens were a proud family, and this was going to hit them hard. But if anyone could help them through it, it was this group. She took a deep breath and began to tell them about Henry, his family, and the town that had loved him so dearly. As she spoke, the bikers listened intently, their resolve growing with every word. They knew what needed to be done. This wouldn't be just another memorial. It would be a tribute that would honor Henry's life and sacrifice in a way that no one would ever forget. But even as they planned, a question lingered in the back of Gabriella's mind. Why have Henry's remains been sent by mail? There had to be more to the story, and she was determined to find out. The Patriot Guard riders set up camp in Rockford, their presence a comforting reminder of the support and respect that Henry Ward deserved. The town quickly rallied around them, offering food, supplies, and whatever else they needed. It was a small community, but their hearts were big, and they were determined to honor Henry in a way that would do him justice. Pandrake and the other riders spent the next few days organizing the memorial coordinating with local businesses and residents. They wanted to create a procession that would lead from the post office to the town square, where a service would be held in Henry's honor. It would be a solemn event, marked by the rumble of motorcycles and the silent reverence of the townspeople. But as they worked, the mystery of why Henry's remains had been sent by mail continued to nag at them. It just didn't add up. A soldier like Henry, who had served with honor and distinction, should have been brought home with full military honors. Something had gone wrong, and they needed to know what it was. Gabriella, who had taken on the role of liaison between the riders and the town, couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. 
she decided to reach out to Henry's family, hoping they could shed some light on the situation. The Greens lived on the outskirts of town, in a modest farmhouse surrounded by fields. Gabriella had known them all her life. Henry's mother, Maya, had been her best friend in high school, and his father, Zachary, had been a respected member of the community. But since Henry's death, the family had retreated into themselves, grieving in private. Gabriella knocked on the door, her heart heavy with anticipation. It took a moment, but finally, Maya answered, her face pale and drawn. Gabriella, she said softly, her voice tinged with sorrow. What brings you here? I'm so sorry to bother you, Maya, Gabriella replied, her voice filled with compassion. But I wanted to talk to you about Henry, about the memorial the Patriot Garb riders are organizing. Maya's eyes filled with tears, and she nodded, stepping aside to let Gabriella in. The two women sat down in the living room, the weight of the situation hanging heavy in the air. They've been wonderful, Maya said, her voice trembling. We never expected anything like this, but it means so much to us. Gabriella reached out and took Maya's hand, offering what comfort she could. We all want to honor Henry, but Maya, there's something I need to ask you. Why was Henry's body sent by mail? It doesn't make sense to me. Maya's expression crumpled, and she began to cry, her shoulders shaking with grief. It was a mistake, she sobbed. There was a mix-up with the paperwork. Henry was supposed to come home with a military escort, but something went wrong, and by the time they realized it, his body was already on its way. They tried to fix it, but it was too late. Gabriella's heart broke for her friend, and she held Maya close as she cried. I'm so sorry, Maya. I can't imagine how difficult this has been for you. Maya wiped her eyes, her voice steadying as she spoke. It's been unbearable, but we're trying to hold on to the fact that Henry is home now, and that's what matters. We just want to give him the farewell he deserves. Gabriella nodded, her mind racing. The mistake had been a terrible one, but there was nothing they could do to change it now. What they could do, however, was make sure that Henry's final journey was honored in a way that would make up for the pain his family had endured. As Gabriella left the ward's home, she felt a renewed sense of determination. The Patriot Guard riders were right. This wasn't just about a memorial. It was about righting a wrong, about ensuring that Henry's sacrifice was remembered with the dignity and respect it deserved. But as she drove back to the post office, another thought occurred to her. A mix-up with the paperwork. It seemed like such a simple explanation for something so profound. Could there be more to the story? Gabriella wasn't sure, but she knew one thing. She wasn't going to rest until she found out the truth. As the day of the memorial approached, the Patriot Guard riders worked tirelessly to prepare for the event. They coordinated with the local police, secured permits, and ensured that everything was in place for the procession and the service that would follow. The town was buzzing with anticipation, and everyone was eager to pay their respects to Henry Ward. Padre, who had taken on the role of leading the riders, was a man of few words, but his dedication to the cause was evident in everything he did. He had seen too many soldiers come home under less than ideal circumstances, and he was determined to make sure that Henry's final journey would be one that honored his service and sacrifice. But even as they'd planned, the question of why Henry's remains had been sent by mail continued to nag at Padre. He couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story, that something had gone wrong in a way that hadn't been fully explained. One evening, as the riders gathered around a campfire in the town square, Padre decided to bring up his concerns. I've been thinking a lot about this situation with Skeet. Ward, he began, his voice low and serious. Something about it doesn't sit right with me. I know we've been told it was a mix-up with the paperwork, but I can't help but wonder if there's more to it than that. The other riders exchanged glances, their expressions reflecting the same unease that Padre felt. What are you thinking, Padre? One of them asked, his voice cautious. I'm thinking that we need to dig deeper, Padre replied. We owe it to Steet, Ward and his family to find out the truth. If there's been any kind of cover-up, or if someone's trying to sweep this under the rug, we need to expose it. The riders nodded in agreement, their resolve hardening. They had come to Rockford to honor a fallen soldier, but now they were beginning to see that there was more at stake. This was about justice, about ensuring that Henry Ward's memory was honored in the way he deserved. Over the next few days, the riders began to investigate. They reached out to contacts in the military, 
spoke to officials who might have information, and combed through records to find any discrepancies that could explain what had happened. It wasn't easy, there were layers of bureaucracy and red tape to navigate, but they were determined to get to the bottom of it. As they dug deeper, they began to uncover a series of errors and miscommunications that had led to Henry's remains being sent by mail. It seemed that a simple clerical error had set off a chain of events that no one had bothered to correct, until it was too late. But there was more. There were indications that someone higher up had tried to cover up the mistake, hoping that it would go unnoticed. Padraig's anger grew as he pieced together the truth. This wasn't just a mistake. It was a failure of the system, a failure to honor a man who had given everything for his country. And it was a failure that the Patriot Garb riders were not going to let slide. With the information they had gathered, Padraig and the other riders decided to confront the officials responsible. They knew it wouldn't be easy, but they were determined to hold those responsible accountable. As they prepared for the meeting, Padraig couldn't help but think about Henry Ward, the young man who had left his hometown to set up his country, only to have his final journey mad by a series of preventable mistakes. It was a tragedy, but it was also a reminder of why they did what they did. The Patriot Guard riders existed to ensure that no soldier's sacrifice would ever be forgotten or disrespected. And they were about to make sure that Henry Ward's memory was honored in a way that would leave an indelible mark on the town of Rockford and on everyone who had the privilege of knowing him. The day of the meeting arrived, and the Patriot Garb riders gathered outside the local government office where the officials responsible for the mistake were stationed. It was a small building, unassuming and nondescript, but the tension in the air was palpable as the riders prepared to confront those who had allowed such a grievous error to occur. Padraig led the group inside, his expression resolute as they approached the reception desk. The woman behind the desk looked up, surprised by the sight of a group of bikers in her office. Can I help you? She asked, her voice uncertain. We're here to see Mr. Richards, Padraig replied, his tone firm. It's about Skeet Henry Ward. The woman hesitated for a moment before nodding and picking up the phone. After a brief conversation, she gestured for the riders to follow her. They were led into a small conference room where a man in a suit was waiting for them. He was in his early fifties with thinning hair and a look of wariness in his eyes. Padraig recognized him as Mr. Richards, the official responsible for overseeing the return of soldiers' remains to their families. Good morning, gentlemen, Mr. Richards said as they entered. I understand you hear about Skeet. Ward, I want to assure you that we're doing everything we can to rectify the situation. Padraig stepped forward, his eyes locked on Mr. Richards. We're not here for assurances, Mr. Richards. We're here for answers. We've done some digging and we know that what happened to Skeet. Ward was more than just a mistake. It was a failure, a failure that you and your department are responsible for. Mr. Richards shifted uncomfortably in his seat, his eyes flickering with guilt. I, I admit that there were errors made in Skeet, Ward's case, but I assure you they were unintentional. The system is not perfect, and sometimes mistakes happen. Mistakes happen, Patrick repeated, his voice rising with anger. This wasn't just a mistake, Mr. Richards. This was a soldier's final journey, and it was handled with the kind of carelessness that's unacceptable. Skeet, Ward deserved better, and so does his family. The other riders nodded in agreement, their expressions mirroring Padraig's anger. They'd have come here to demand accountability, and they weren't going to leave until they got it. Mr. Richards looked down at the table, his hands trembling slightly. You're right, he said quietly. Skeet, war deserved better. I take full responsibility for what happened, and I'm prepared to face the consequences. Padraig's anger softened slightly as he saw the sincerity in Mr. Richards' eyes. It was clear that the man was genuinely remorseful for what had happened, but that didn't change the fact that the damage had been done. What we want, Patrick said, his voice steady, is for you to make this right. Not just for Skeet, Ward, but for every soldier who might be affected by this kind of negligence. We want you to ensure that this never happens again. Mr. Richards nodded, his expression serious. I'll do everything in my power to make sure of that. I'll initiate an investigation into the procedures that led to this mistake, and I'll work to implement changes to prevent it from happening in the future. The riders exchanged glances, their resolve unwavering. It wasn't a perfect solution, but it was a step in the right direction. Thank you, Patrick said finally, his voice firm. But know this, we'll be watching.
If we see any sign that you're not following through on your promises, we'll be back. Mr. Richards nodded again, his eyes filled with a mixture of guilt and determination. You have my word. I won't let this happen again. With that, the meeting ended, and the riders left the office, their mission accomplished. They had confronted the system that had failed Henry Ward, and they had made sure that his memory would be honored in the way he deserved. But as they rode back to Rockford at Padre, couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness. No matter what changes were made, nothing could undo the pain that Henry's family had endured. It was a reminder of the cost of war, of the sacrifices that so many families had to bear. And it was a reminder of why they rode, why they honored the fallen, why they stood up for those who couldn't stand up for themselves. The Patriot Guard riders existed to ensure that no soldier's sacrifice would ever be forgotten, and they had fulfilled that mission once again. The day of the memorial arrived, and the town of Rockford was transformed. Flags lined the streets, businesses closed their doors, and residents gathered along the procession route to pay their respects to Skeet. Henry Ward. The atmosphere was one of solemn reverence, a collective recognition of the sacrifice that had been made. The Patriot Guard riders led the procession, their motorcycles rumbling softly as they escorted the flag-draped casket from the post office to the town square. The townspeople stood in silence, their heads bowed, as the procession passed by. It was a sight that would stay with them forever, a tribute not just to Henry, but to every soldier who had given their life in service to their country. At the town square, the casket was placed on a pedestal adorned with flowers and flags. The square was filled with people, their faces etched with grief and pride. They had come to honor a son of Rockford, a young man who had served his country with distinction and who had made the ultimate sacrifice. Padraig and the other riders stood guard around the casket, their expressions solemn as they prepared for the service. A local pastor stepped forward to offer a prayer, followed by the playing of Tats by Buvla. The mournful notes filled the air, a poignant reminder of the cost of freedom. Then it was time for Henry's family to speak. Maya Ward stepped forward, her voice trembling with emotion as she addressed the crowd. Thank you all for being here today. She began, her voice steadying as she spoke. Henry was more than just a soldier. He was a son, a brother, a friend. He was someone who believed in the values of honor, duty, and sacrifice. And he gave his life for those values. She paused, her eyes filled with tears. It's been a difficult journey, one that we never expected to take but we've been overwhelmed by the support and love that this community has shown us. And we're so grateful to the Patriot Guard riders for making sure that Henry's memory is honored in the way he deserved. The crowd listened in silence, their hearts heavy with emotion. It was a moment of collective grief, but also one of unity, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, people could come together to honor those who had given everything. As the service came to an end, the riders performed a final tribute revving their engines in unison as a show of respect. The sound filled the air, a powerful reminder of the brotherhood and solidarity that existed among those who served. For Gabrielle, who stood in the crowd with tears in her eyes, it was a moment of profound emotion. She had watched as the town came together to honor Henry, and she knew that this was a day that would be remembered for years to come. The mystery of why Henry's remains had been sent by mail had been resolved, but it had led to something much greater, a tribute that honored not just one soldier, but the spirit of a community that refused to let his sacrifice be forgotten. The memory of Skeet, Henry Ward's final journey, and the unforgettable memorial held in his honor became a cherished part of Rockford's history. The town continued to thrive, its residents bound together by the shared experience of coming together in a time of need. The Patriot Garb Riders remained a presence in Rockford, returning often to visit and participate in community events. They had become more than just a group of bikers. They were part of the fabric of the town, a symbol of honor, respect, and unwavering commitment to those who had served. Gabriella continued her work at the post office, her role in the community more important than ever. She had seen firsthand the power of connection, of what could be achieved when people came together for a common cause. It was a lesson that stayed with her, one that she carried with her in everything she did. As for the Greens, they found comfort in the knowledge that Henry's memory had been honored in a way that transcended the mistakes and mishaps that had initially marred his final journey. They knew that his legacy lived on, not just in the town of Rockford, but in the hearts of everyone who had been touched by his story. And as the years passed, 
The town continued to tell the story of Skeet Henry Ward, the soldier who had been brought home by mail, but whose memory had been honored by a group of bikers who refused to let his sacrifice be forgotten. It was a story of love, of loss, and of the enduring power of community, a story that would be remembered for generations to come.